I can't believe it's already been a year, but we now have the second installment in the CGI Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies for Disney+. Plus. This is like Wimpy Kid video number... Uh, four at this point. And so to save you some time, we're going to do a quick summary on all the films so far to see what we're working with here. These three? Good. This one? Bad. Mm. Very bad. Now uh, this one? Very disappointing. I refrain from calling last year's movie awful because really it's not. It's just super forgettable, which is made even worse due to the fact that the groundwork was all there. But I think that it failed in trying too hard to be accurate to the original books, whereas the first live action movie was willing to change some things, losing accuracy in favor of being better. But now we have Roderick Rules. It's got a lot to live up to with the live action version being arguably the most beloved in the trilogy. Although a large part of that might be because of Devin Bostic carrying the film on his shoulders. Fred! You kill my father, you mother! That's the wrong clip. If you've ever seen the original movie, you know that it mostly succeeds due to how well Greg and Roger work off each other. The movie takes place over the span of months, so you get plenty of time to see how they don't get along, the different ways that Roger makes his life a living hell, but then gradually watch as he starts to realize that he likes hanging out with Greg, before falling out again but still coming back in the end stronger than ever, giving us a permanent shift in their dynamic that's even carried over to the sequel, Dog Dads, where they're much less antagonistic with each other. Like the first film, the groundwork is all here, they just need to adapt it into a cartoon, which would only open up the storytelling potential here. It sucks. Okay, okay, I gotta reiterate. Much like the first, it's not terrible or anything, but it's very disappointing how, for what initially seemed like a perfect idea, you know, animated wimpy kid movies, they don't have to worry about the actors getting older. I just forget about these things right after watching them because they do nothing interesting with the source material and peel in comparison to the previous movies. Although, you know what else peels in comparison? My old bulky wallet compared to my brand new Ridge wallet. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallets are these sleek, compact wallets that look super stylish while taking up minimal space in your pockets, with enough space to keep everything you need, whether it be cash or cards. And if you go to ridge.com slash lsmark, did you know that you can save up to 40% through December 22nd? And if wallets aren't your thing, how about their great key case or backpack? No joke, I think I last sponsored Ridge back in like October of 2020, and I'm still using this bag, I love it. Wonderful for traveling. There's also this great key case that I love would really recommend it. So remember to go to ridge.com slash alicemark with the link in the description and check out their amazing products. And thanks to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. The plot for Roger Gruels is pitiful. A big issue with the first CGI movie was how despite being a movie, it was only an hour long, meaning a bunch of stuff from the book had to be cut for time, and it left the whole thing feeling half-baked, like you were just watching a super condensed version of the first book and therefore nothing felt impactful enough. Thankfully, this one is a little bit longer at an hour and 15 minutes, but even though the live-action film is only 20 minutes longer, it feels like that one managed to fit way more into that short time frame. Epic. The kids' parents are headed out to celebrate their anniversary, and so leave Greg and Roger home alone for the weekend, where Roger throws a party and locks Greg out, and so in exchange for not snitching on him, he promises to teach Greg his patented Roderick's rules. That's the best way I can really summarize it. I never really considered it until I interviewed the creator of Wimpy Kid, Jeff Kinney, over on my podcast channel, but he never really wrote those original books with a standard three-act structure. You're more so just seeing the highlights of Greg's year in high school, with a very thinly veiled plot about Greg wanting to be popular, but his dorky friend Riley getting all the fame instead. When making it into a movie, though, they knew it needed to follow some sort of cohesive story, and so much more emphasis is put on Greg and Riley's friendship, where they follow the predictable hero's journey of Greg wanting something and desperately trying to get it, while constantly putting down his friend for just being himself, this backfiring as Riley becomes popular for just being himself, and Greg realizes that he misses him and no longer cares about popularity, cherishing his friendship instead. Roderick Rules does that too, putting all the focus on Greg's relationship with his brother, but so much is built around that to make these characters feel like they actually have… lives. Greg doesn't really care about getting along with Roderick, but over the course of the film, sees the positives in him getting advice for how to survive middle school, which fits in with his attempt to get with the new girl, Holly Hills. While Roderick needs to make sure he appears to be on good terms with Greg to get mom bucks which he can trade in for real money, they're both in it for their own selfish gains, but soon realize that they like spending time with each other and genuinely have fun, coming through for each other in the end with the talent show. In the Disney Plus version, all these beats are here. Well, except for Holly Hills, she isn't even as much as mentioned. But I think it feels in a similar way to the previous one, where it's much more focused on just ripping from the books, rather than taking those elements and turning them into something more suited for a film. 
Something clever about the live-action version is that it's not really just a Roger Rules movie, instead also adapting elements from The Last Straw, the third book. This is why Holly isn't in the animated version. She was mostly featured in the next book, but the filmmakers were smart enough to pick and choose whatever elements they wanted and combine them to make a better story. The scene where Greg is running through the retirement home in his underwear? As a nine-year-old, watching that was the most intense movie-going experience I ever had. Because you know that the risk here is of Holly seeing Greg like this and ruining all his chances with her. Me it even worse because Roger has the whole thing on video, at the part in the movie where he's most pissed off at Greg. But in the new one, he doesn't even lose his shirt and there's no real sticks because Holly isn't here to potentially see him. And Roderick doesn't get the video. Instead, I'm pretty sure it follows the book, where he just later reads it in his diary. They're not even sent to the retirement home as a punishment for the party, it's just because their parents are going away for their anniversary again. Everything here is laser focused on Roderick, but even that is wildly inconsistent throughout the movie. So much so that they couldn't even keep track of when they were and weren't getting along. Oh, fuck you. First of all, the movie just jumps straight into things, assuming that you already know Greg and Roderick's dynamic. I mean, I do, but like, for a new viewer, none of this matters. In the previous CG movie, Roderick appears for like two minutes. I don't really know this guy in this universe. Greg's mum in the first five minutes is like, this weekend is finally a chance for you two to bond. But we haven't seen them be at odds with each other at all, except for one five second shot in the opening. Really? In the first movie, the parents going away happened a good bit into the thing, with just about every scene before that establishing how much Greg hates Roderick for messing with him all the time, publicly humiliating him twice at that point. So seeing them get along feels earned. We see them genuinely have fun together. The only real glimpse of that we see here is a single scene of Roderick teaching him how to play the drums, which is a really nice moment, I liked that a lot. But from this point, they get sent off to their retirement home out of nowhere, and Roderick starts to fuck with him again, then proceeds to knowingly give him a bad science project to turn in. They keep flip-flopping on what their dynamic is. The final straw of... I thought you were cool. Guess I was wrong. Will not and could not beat the way more impactful and quite frankly iconic... My brother. She'll never be my friend. I know I've been doing a lot of comparing, which may not seem fair to you, although I'd argue it's reasonable for me to expect the third adaptation to be the best of them all, but there are some positives here that I'd like to mention. Things that weren't done in the original movie that I feel like were good directions to go in, and if the movie focused on this stuff more, it would have been much greater. And all of this has to do with Greg's grandfather. R.I.P. Ed Eisner. I'm sorry, this is one of the last things you were ever in. First of all, to get the minor one out of the way, I like that Greg is more of a prick here. In the live-action Roger Gruels, he had lost a bit of his edge from the first film, but here he's an asshole, I love it. Actively blackmailing Roderick and picking up on his bad traits. Like when Roderick gives him the shitty school project, Greg goes and demands to get back his 100 mom bucks, and on top of that, an extra 100, saying if he doesn't get it, he's gonna show the party photos to their mom. It doesn't last long, but I love that scene. Especially how, despite getting what he wanted, he accidentally ends up showing his mom the photos anyway. It's great, like, fucking power dynamic there. But when they go to the retirement home, Greg's grandfather comments on Frank, his son and Greg's dad, and how he's deeply saddened that all his kids seem to hate each other, not even so much as speaking to one another, which expands upon a comment that Frank makes near the beginning of the film. That stuff was sad, and it leads to a heartwarming conversation between Greg and Roderick by the end, where Greg worries that they're gonna end up the same way, and Roderick assuring him that they'll always stick together. That was nice, and a conclusion that seemed like it was coming from a much better movie. It, it's not built up well to that at all. Also, I, I don't know, but... You know, you could have had a nice little landing where Greg invites his uncles over for dinner or something to reconnect and make his granddad happy, but no, he can stay sad till he dies, I guess. Also, to comment on the animation, it still looks cheap. I'd like to once again point out how amazing the original announcement animation looks from years ago, and how the actual movies have not been able to replicate this at all, mainly because they're clearly going for something more akin to the Peanuts movie there, where it still looks like it's on a 2D perspective. But at some point in production, I guess, that was ditched in favor of looking like Jimmy Neutron. Later no it sucks, because every now and then, like in Greg's run-in with the security guards, they shoot from that flat point of view, and it looks solid. But for 95% of the film, it just looks so gross and barren, with everything having this dull grass shading. There are also way too many moments where they switch the mobs of the characters from one side of their head to the other, but there's no easing or transition so it just looks like a Sonic game where it's jarringly shifting depending on where you put the camera. But I spoke about the animation in the last movie's video and really it's the exact same, just looks kinda cheap. 
Disappointed but not surprised. That's how I feel about this new Roderick Rules. All these movies are doing is making me get closer and closer and wanting to drop like an hour long video, dissecting what made those first three films so good because by god does 10 minutes not cut it. I would say I am holding I'd hope but I don't kind on it. It seems like these films are much more interested in directly adapting the books into animation without considering what makes them good. That being a three act structure. And if that's what they want to do then fine but like not gonna stop people from thinking the originals are better then. Let's just hope we can wait a while before the next release. Oh fuck off again!